Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 317. It is the final week of October of 2022. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and the only wrestling podcast. Lots of content this week for no apparent reason. <laughs> New Japan decided to run two pay-per-views in the United States this week. WWE is running their normal SmackDown show. AEW is running their normal Friday night show. There's just so much going on. But maybe the most interesting thing this week. There is a, a new version of what happened at the All Out Brawl Out from the CM Punk camp in a story that was leaked to Nick Houseman of Wrestling Inc., who infamously started off this whole thing <laughs> by asking the first question at the infamous All Out Scrum. A very strange story was leaked to Wrestling Inc. this week, claiming that CM Punk's dog Larry was injured in the brawl. He had two teeth knocked loose, which then had to be pulled at a previously scheduled veterinarian appointment. There were a lot of details in this very strange story. There was uh, CM Punk saying CM Punk's camp claiming to Wrestling Inc. that he was under Illinois state law. And the Castle Act. <laughs> what? He was defending. He was using force to defend himself in his domicile when his locker room door was breached, uh, setting off the all out brawl. Very, very strange story that was linked to Wrestling Inc. this week. Um, what do you think of it? Um, I I appreciated um, how careful the wording of it was. Uh, if you pay attention to to what he says, everything you just said is true. However, he, I think I wouldn't be surprised if a a, a lawyer looked over the statement uh, before before it was it was released because he there's lines in there like AEW has not reached out to CM Punk since the incident. Which that might be true if if Punk is only communicating to the company through his lawyer, which probably not a bad idea on his part. Uh, that would probably be true. Uh, you know, it's it's easy when when he mentions that the locker room was kicked in, kicked in in the statement from Punk's camp is in quotes, thus giving a little wiggle room of whether or not they are claiming that the that's. <laughs> that Matt and Nick Jackson hit a double super kick to open the door or not. <laughs> uh, and then it's noted that yes, when the door was, was swung open that Larry, the dog was hit and that days later, uh, punk was taking him to an already scheduled vet appointment. And Oh, by the way, he has some loose teeth. So there's not a point in there. If you look at that with like a fine tooth comb where he says, the young buck swung the door open, hit my dog and knocked his teeth out. That's right. clearly what he's implying, but he didn't say that. Uh, or, or I'm sorry, his camp, his camp, right. which was the very specific wording used uh, repeatedly. Yes. Um, so, and then, yes, as you mentioned, the, uh, the, the castle doctrine law under state law, which, uh, you know, Hey, and again, nobody can prove the guy didn't feel threatened or back to do a corner. I would question whether or not that uh, that law applies to a locker room in an arena. <laughs> uh, but I'm not a lawyer. So that's that's uh, that's that was very interesting. And then, of course, the the main event of this statement being that uh, Punk was uh, uh, concerned uh, and had reason to believe that uh, that the the match with Adam <laughs> Page 
at double or nothing uh, was going to, to break down into a real fight and that punk would have been forced to defend himself. And therefore he was still on uh, still in sort of defensive mode. Some four months later when he, uh, or three months later when he uh, came face to face with the, uh, with the young bucks and, and Kenny Omega and whoever else uh, in that moment. So uh, just, you know, it felt like the the fire was kind of smoldering, <laughs> like it was kind of it was kind of going out. We were running out of interesting things to to look at or to have discourse over. But now we get a a carefully worded statement with new details, including the young bucks injuring Larry the dog, who has, to my knowledge, has not made a statement as of uh, as of recording here. I don't believe Larry has spoken to anyone. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's wonderful, and uh, I think yeah, I think for for my money, the the best part is the the claim that uh, Punk was scared that uh, Hangman Page was going to shoot on him. I think that's my favorite part personally. In the midst of all of this, the there was a video on a EW Dynamite this week um, for the Elite who were also backstage at Dynamite this week. So their return seems imminent. A contract buyout for CM Punk seems imminent. They were negotiating, apparently, over the length of a non-compete, which is interesting because if you see that statement, that or the story attributed to CM Punk's camp that Wrestling Inc. ran this week, how... Do you get into business with this very litigious man? It's a good question. Uh, to me, the the one thing he has going for him that a lot of people that maybe have a, a contentious reputation have going for them is that, as we've talked about several times, both WWE and AEW are uh, return-based businesses. There's a lot of, you know, a lot, there's a lot of interest in bringing back somebody, even if long term, they may not generate a ton of excitement or a long term shift in, in viewership or, or whatever. Uh, in the short term, you get the big splash when you bring them in. And so that would be the biggest deal for, for, or the, the biggest cap in his, or the feather in his cap, I think, is that he's still a big star and WWE always needs another big star to return now he famously is hated by <laughs> two of the three people that run wwe these days are they i think they're less likely to bring him back than maybe vince would have um and i don't know what he would ask for to go back i'm sure it would be more than whatever he got in AEW. um so i don't know if they would be willing to pay him that much but yeah, uh, that that's that's the only I think the thing he has going for him because yeah, I would agree generally speaking I'd be I wouldn't be jumping at they're chomping at the bit to 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 get in bed with the guy, but so to speak. Uh but I I do think that that like there's a there's a there is always the thing of he's a star and it will be a big deal and everybody will be excited for at least you know, a couple months when he first comes back and he's on his best behavior, you know? Can, can we count on <laughs> his best? How long did his best behavior last in AEW? <laughs> I mean, do we even know? Do we really know? Yeah, it depends on who you ask. I mean, the the, the page promo that, that set this all off is in May. And obviously that would be an issue that had been simmering behind the scenes for a while. There's there's the Eddie Kingston promo that is cut like two months into his tenure in AEW about how he's a snake and nobody wants him there. So, I mean, <laughs> there were there were rumblings of it, at least at the time that he was maybe not not getting along with everybody from from pretty early on but you know everything everybody was it was all selfies and sunshine and rainbows for that first month and you know slapping fives and kissing babies for a while so you do get that you get that initial bump when he comes in again whether or not that's if 
you know, the merchandise sales that he would generate or, you know, again, the short term, perhaps bump in viewership that he might give you. Is that worth what happens when he does what he has done <laughs> in, in two straight companies that he's worked for? I, I would probably say no, but again, uh, it's all about the short term money. It's all about what money, what, what excitement and buzz and metrics you can, you can show increasing when you're, you know, when these quarterly earnings calls are coming. So I don't, I don't think it's impossible. Is all I'm saying. We absolutely cannot rule it out at this point. We cannot rule it out. Uh, what do you think of the elite video? They're coming back. Mm, what do you think? <laughs> it's suggested to me. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel and put this video with a bunch of red circles and arrows all over it. Maybe I'm, I'm getting too far into the, the weeds of this, but I thought, because the, the whole thing is, if you didn't see it is there it's various highlights of the elites tenure. And then it, the, 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 the frame freezes and then the young bucks and Kenny Omega fade away. Like they've been snapped by Thanos. And uh, I took that to mean that they're, coming back as like 1996 sting and the gimmick is going to be they're not heels they're not baby faces they're they the company turned their backs on on them and therefore they are they have faded away they're not they're not uh, they don't consider themselves part of uh, of AEW anymore so that's that's my grand uh, prediction for for this so so they cooked up another storyline where the promotion's a heel? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying it's what I would do, but I just what else does that infer if you're if, if, if the impression is the elite, the E in AEW is fading away. I don't, uh, I, don't that, know. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a, there's a more obvious metaphor that I'm missing there, but that, that's that's kind of what I got was the vibe is that they're they're either coming back as heels who will get cheered because they're gonna crap on Tony Khan or they will uh they will come back as sort of uh you know broody broody uh tweeners who uh who play by their own rules and don't uh, don't embrace the fans or uh or nor are they full heels. They, uh, I can't think of too many people more poorly suited to play characters like that than Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. The, um, the theater kids of pro wrestling? <laughs> yes. I I guess. I, I... You couched all this by saying that maybe you're reading too much into it, and uh, I'm just going to say, I think you're reading too much into it. Fair. <laughs> I think they're just gonna come back and uh, they'll be big baby faces. That's I just think that's how it's gonna go. Yeah, I mean, I prefer that for the record. <laughs> I just think we're uh, we sometimes we fancy ourselves as uh, more of uh, our tours in this in this wrestling business than maybe we really are. And uh, you know, I just like I said, I I. I Again, it could have just been they had an idea for a vignette and they're like, wouldn't it be cool? And they're like, we what does it mean, though? I don't know. We'll just figure it out later. It's just it's just a sign that we're coming back or whatever. So you could absolutely be right. And it was just uh, somebody had an idea and they threw it together. And it's, uh, you know, coming soon. The elite are coming back type thing. And I'm I'm overthinking it, which, again, I hope I am. <laughs> because, yes, I don't I don't necessarily think that uh, Kenny, Nick and Matt sitting up in the rafters uh for for 18 months is uh is a good idea so uh, to let's build, hope i'm wrong to build to what another match the de the death triangle like one yeah i mean I whoever, 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 yeah, whoever the whoever the champions are or uh i hope not anyway uh dynamite this week was certainly a show and mm -hmm. there were wrestlers on it and they did wrestling matches and uh, they are uh, continuing to tease Maxwell Jacob Freeman turning babyface. I assume this is all a swerve because Tony Khan's favorite thing to do is to set up a swerve 
and then swerve the swerve. So mm -hmm. I think MJF is not turning babyface. But uh, the show closing angle this week on Dynamite was MJF uh, firing the firm. <sighs> the firm. <sighs> this show sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do not like all of <laughs> I do not like all of the wrestling. The booking is t absolutely awful. It's horrendous booking that makes no sense whatsoever. But anyway, MJF might be turning babyface. They want you to think he's turning babyface uh, before he challenges the number one babyface in the company for the world title on their pay per view, which is coming up in three weeks or so. Uh, what you think, Dynamite this week? That was fine. <laughs> I'm sorry for an anticlimactic. I should have let you go second. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's. I thought it was an okay show. They're just kicking the can down the street on some stuff. Looks like we're in line for a, a Jericho Claudio match. Probably maybe another Brian Danielson Daniel Garcia match. Um. And then, yeah, you have the, the main event and you would you would think something with the elite as well. So, uh, yeah, as far as the show closing angle, I think it's it's definitely gives you um, whether you like the individual people involved in the firm or not. Yeah, I think it would give anyone uh, 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 whiplash, to say the least, for when these guys go from uh feuding with matt hardy on dark to laying out the top two characters on your show uh that's 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 a pretty stark uh contrast in in the levels at which we were supposed to see these these acts i think um and to do it with there wasn't really a big change i mean they they teased like two weeks ago that mjf and and stokely had words but um yeah it really went zero to 60 and look in the event that you were going to turn MJF, you are going to need other top heels to replace him. Um, but in the short term, it just felt like, hey, it's it's something to do. <laughs> and maybe we want to get the firm over for stuff and then get over Morrissey and Paige as guys that Moxley or MJF, whoever the champion is, can wrestle after the pay-per-view. All right. Sounds good to me. Why not? Will Yudo double booked himself this week. He was booked for a rampage, a live rampage, and a New Japan pay per view at the same time. That's humorous. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a real uh, right hand, not knowing what the left hand's doing. I guess. God bless Will Yudo. I know people seem to like him because he is polite and rarely <laughs> late. However. <laughs> What a world we live in where the two promotions book him on the same night. <laughs> I find that I find that very humorous. <laughs> I mean, I, I he, he's the of the people in that faction. He would not maybe be your first guess as to who uh, multiple multiple promotions were attempting to uh, get on their their live television or pay-per-view broadcast at the same time. Yeah, so what do you know about that? Uh, AEW running another live Rampage. I don't know why they're running live. I thought their number for Rampage last week was horrifying. I thought it was very, very scary. <laughs> Under 500,000 people watched it, and a small, small percentage of that were in the uh, the eighteen to forty nine demographic, I they I think Rampage is dead. I think they need to reevaluate things. And I know they're not going to get rid of it because why would you get rid of it when you're getting paid more money for it? But that shows that show needs to be something else. Yeah, I mean it's 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 not appointment viewing. <laughs> like it that's that's the whole thing, and I know. Tony Khan kind of paid lip service that, uh, you know, and again, this was before maybe he knew that the elite and punk were going to all get suspended on the same day, but he did claim that all oh, once, 
once all these people are back from injuries and all this stuff, we'll be able to start a, start loading up Rampage again. But he hasn't. And whether that's because he sees it as a a DOA show and and so he's just filling it with content to fulfill the contract and and uh and they'll they'll figure out what they're gonna do whenever whenever the deal's up or whatever. I don't know. But it's yeah, it's, it doesn't feel like an important show. It's it's not. There's very rarely. I mean, I they did switch it so that Moxley is wrestling on the show. Like occasionally, a main event guy will wrestle on the show, but it's usually against a lower card guy in a, you know, a, a 10 to 12 minute match. You can't really have a bunch of long matches, obviously, because it's only an hour on this show. So he's Moxley is wrestling Daddy Magic, the nipples mm-hmm. guy. In a world title eliminator match. Mm -hmm. When I talk about the booking of this company sucking, why would Daddy Magic get a world title shot? (laughs) Well, if he pinned the champion, he should get a shot, shouldn't he? If the 499th ranked guy out of a promotion with 500 people in it beats number one, does he jump from 499 to number two? I suppose... The answer is yes in this scenario. I just I don't enjoy the booking. I think it's pretty bad. I don't know. I don't know. That's just so far down the list of things that <laughs> that bother me. It's like, yeah, I feel Daddy like Daddy that... Magic getting a world title like, if you're match saying... doesn't bother you. <laughs> no, I mean, in the sense if you're saying he shouldn't wrestle the world champion at all, <laughs> fine. I don't, I'm not gonna argue. I'm not arguing with you. I just like the idea that like it would be prof- well, yeah. It would be preposterous if Daddy Magic won, <laughs> but he's not. He's gonna get crushed. So it's just it. Like I said, it's it's. So it's why con- book the match? Because the original <laughs> match got changed. Because Wheeler Yuta got double booked. Why? So book another match. <laughs> I, I get. I'm, book a match people want to see. Again, <laughs> I that goes back to what I just said, which is that I don't think. He's trying to get people to watch. I think he's just (laughs) filling out the shows with content and just doing what he can to get to the next week because I think he knows nobody's watching it and I think he knows nobody is going to watch it. I think, I mean, if you put John Moxley versus MJF for the title on it next week, I don't think it would do more than, I mean, it would do more than 400,000 viewers, but it's not going to do... I think the ship has sailed. Like, <laughs> unless unless John Cena is going to debut on on Rampage <laughs> coming up, I don't think they're getting over a million viewers. Or they, you know, they'll be. They should thank their lucky stars if they ever get over seven hundred thousand again. <laughs> like, I think that's what that show is going to do, and they know that. So, it's it's the it's a you know a slightly more competitive version of the dark YouTube shows and also where a lot of the ring of honor stuff lives for better or worse. So like, again, I understand it's probably frustrating if it's your job to cover it, but (laughs) for me, it's like, well, if it's not an interesting lineup, I'm probably just not going to watch the show. I, I, I guess it's, it's just, if I had that, if I had that roster, Daddy Magic and John Moxley, I don't think is a match in a world title eliminator match. I don't think if you gave me three hours, I would. But all right, I don't know what. <laughs> Look, I the 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 two guys just irritate me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ir- 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 irrational, irrationally, they're on television way too much. The Daddy Magic guy's got one note, and I'm I'm pretty tired of the one note. But that's not why you called. Um, <laughs> hey, EW is the only good show that AEW produces. <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue with you there. It's it's a wonderful, <laughs> it's a wonderful slice of uh, of, uh, of 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 time every every Sunday morning. I I think we need to give RJ Sudi the book. <laughs> I think it's time. He and Renee were so great on that show this week. They were like you can you can tell there's there's certain people that he gets on there with. Renee was one. Taz was one. Where it's just like it just 
it's perfect. They like the other person completely gets the shtick and knows yes. how to play into it. And yeah, she yes. was great at that. Yes. All right. So now that I've trashed AEW for 25 minutes, mm-hmm. um, WWE was really dull this week. Sure was. Uh, Raw was quite boring. And the big angle on the show was Nikki Crows <laughs> returning to her Nikki Crows persona. Mm-hmm. Nikki or almost a superhero. She's back to being um, an unmedicated Scottish lady who cannot say her own gimmick name. <laughs> Nikki, Nikki Crows laid out the women's division to close WWE Raw this week. We're on the road to uh, Crown Jewel. They're they're uh, that are they're in cruise control. I think this last month of WWE shows has been. Uh, I don't think there's there's anything that's like insult your intelligence bad, but I think it's been really dull and really boring. And uh, I thought Raw was just a slog to get through this week. Uh, any thoughts on that? Uh, the big Nikki Crows angle or oh, what's going on in WWE at the moment. My thought is that uh, Paul needs to tell needs to curb the amount of studded leather jackets that are allowed on this show. Uh, uh, but no, uh, I mean, good. The superhero thing wasn't working. I maintain that it could have if we tried for more than if one he... second. And maybe maybe booked her as a baby face instead of <laughs> yes, didn't book her as inexplicably turning turning the children's baby face character heel. Yes, like one month into it, they just <laughs> gave up on it. Uh, just awful. Just it was. But the point is, we can't uh, we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. It wasn't working. She is still a very I think I think she's a very charismatic woman. And she can she can have a role on this show. So uh, good for her. It also sets up probably if maybe for the Crown Jewel show. That'll be maybe the one women's match. And hey, that's a way to do another Bianca Bailey match where one of them doesn't have to get pinned, isn't it? It's... <laughs> you pin the new character. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem. We were talking this week about off the air. We were talking about the booking of damage control and why it just kind of hasn't worked. It's like, well, I I don't think the booking of this group has been very focused. I think Bailey should have been like the final boss as as the, the last match with Bianca, and instead she had they've just wrestled a bunch. And uh, the tag team, Dakota and EO, they lost the big tag team title tournament and then won the titles back, like uh, won the titles like a week later for no no apparent reason. Mm -hmm. They did too many jobs too quick and they went to what should have been a match that they built to for six months. They built to it in six weeks and uh yeah, but Bailey got her uh, her pin back on Bianca this week, and yes, I suppose they're doing a three way with Bailey, Nikki Crows, and Bianca Belair uh, at some point in the future. Here, I don't know the damage control thing. Just it, I was very excited for it when it started. I I don't think it's been executed particularly well. Yeah, I would agree with that. I I definitely think you're onto something when you talk about the the squandering of what could have been months and months of this, especially because they debuted on SummerSlam in July and we are heading towards, you would assume that it'll be Bianca and some people against damage control and who will maybe have a fourth member by then. Uh, And in the war games at survivor series, which is fine but a way to elongate that rather than just building to just having a bunch of like nothing, six woman tags for six weeks and then have Bailey and Bianca wrestle and Bianca win and then just keep feuding Uh, a better way to do that where it doesn't feel such like such a slog perhaps. And the matches do feel a little fresher is that right. You, you save Bailey until, you know, maybe they don't ideally they wouldn't touch in like a singles match until, 
until maybe the war games or, or they wouldn't. And then maybe Bailey wins, wins the war games by pinning Bianca and you, uh, and then you set up the, the pay-per-view match for whatever the December show is. Um, but I, that's not what they did. And so as a result, yeah, it's Bailey who has already been beaten and a feud that has felt out of gas for like four weeks already is still going and will still go all the way through at least survivor series, if not beyond, because you know, what else you got? <laughs> yeah. You, th- there's a reason they had to keep going back to, to Bianca and Becky, uh, which is they had one baby face and one heel. Um, and now I, like I don't know. I feels like the, the word is, is it quite clear on whether or not Asuka is actually hurt or not? Um, but and then there's, I guess you could, it feels like maybe it's time to just put the belt on Bailey because then she could wrestle somebody like Asuka or like Alexa or whoever else they have, although they've already done Bailey and Alexa on TV with the clean finish. So I, I don't know. It just, it feels, yeah, it just feels dead in the water and it's not necessarily the fault of any of the individual people's talent. It's just, it hasn't really gelled and it doesn't feel particularly important. And it feels like everybody involved is less over than they were when it all started, which is, you know, theoretically, at least the opposite of what you're going for. Aside from the, uh, the big Bianca Bailey match, the only other thing that really stood out to me on raw this week was Johnny Gargano, I think was in, 15 segments (laughs) out of 13 segments on the show and oh my gosh the the goal of the booking on raw this week apparently was to make johnny gargano so annoying that i never wanted to see him again (laughs) and we like the wrestlings here on this program that's right yeah, we love Aunt Can- we love Aunt Candace. We love uh we love John. Uh but it was uh perplexing. <laughs> uh did they because he's involved now in the Dexter Loomis Miz storyline. Speaking of storylines that ran out of the gas six weeks ago and are still going. Yeah. Um so he's involved in that and he's kind of bullying the Miz. Yep. Uh, and being annoying in that <laughs> way, they did a yes. Miz and R Truth match. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then so Gargano's involved with all that, and then they do a segment on the show where Johnny's wife, Aunt Candace, is laid out off screen uh, by by the damage control, or was yeah. she? Um, mm-hmm. So we don't. She see might the... be turning. Yeah, they, that that was my thought when they didn't show it. Was that, mm-hmm. oh, I bet she's, I bet they didn't actually attack her and she's going to turn at some point here and be the fourth member. Um, but in the meantime, as far as, as far as we know, unless Johnny is also secretly a heel and knows that his wife is faking it, uh, he's, he's, he, uh, he stopped, he stopped going to check on her to, uh, to uh, challenge uh, the new, the new JBL, <laughs> Baron Corbin. <laughs> to a to a wrestling match and then they wrestled on this show and they wrestled for a while and then johnny gargano got his ish rocked by jbl and lost he got his ass beat <laughs> yeah he got the yeah uh, it was just a mess and you're like what exact i i we and again this is another thing we talked about off the air we might have even talked about it on the air before i never expected paul levesque to book WWE main roster shows the way he booked his NXT shows. But I feel like he should still be able to see that the way the most successful Johnny Gargano has ever been was as a nice, likable white meat baby face and having him try to do like a, I don't know, he's like 2006 DX Shawn Michaels impersonation he's doing just not it's just not working and he's really not over enough with the larger audience to warrant him being in so many segments on the show 
whether or not you think he's talented enough to carry a show like that, maybe he is. But right now, crowd wasn't reacting to him, especially not by the fifth time he's on. <laughs> he's out in front of that crowd. Like, geez, they're just, they're just, they're just running him into the ground there. And I, I, I can't quite figure out why. Other than that, they looked around. They're like, well, we need somebody. We need a. The gimmick once again is that Baron Corbin hates indie guys and small guys uh, and internet internet darlings, I guess, because he beat Ziggler last week and they looked around and went, well, who else we got <laughs> that he can beat? And I guess is Ricochet on SmackDown? Not the brand splits matter anymore, but yeah, I guess nice. they didn't want to send Ricochet out there yet. So, uh, you know, they're like, well, he can beat Gargano. And so they did. <laughs> Not not what I would have done, but it's what they did. NXT had a Halloween Havoc. Not a lot of big news coming out of that show. Um, NXT television this week, uh, The Rock's daughter debuted. And if it were me and I had The Rock's daughter on my roster, I would probably try to use her real name in some way, form or fashion Mm -hmm. so that people would know that this was the rock's daughter. That's not the tact they took. And they put her in the dirt worst faction in the company. uh, Joe Gacy's schism. (laughs) Oh man. Just the, the, the three D chess going on between Paul and, and Dwayne right now, you know, Dwayne's out there talking in interviews about how he and he's good friends with Nick Khan and perhaps one day he'll take on the leadership role in, in WWE <laughs> and, and Paul just immediately, it's a, it's a one, two counter here. He immediately puts Dwayne's daughter in the worst faction in the company. Like what a, what a great counter punch by Paul Levesque, you know, stand standing over that one. Yeah, well, th- that Joe Gacy group is, is absolutely awful. I don't know who it's for. Um, they did give them all smiley face masks, mm-hmm. which I think is a big improvement. <laughs> um, because before Joe Gacy like wrestles in a polo shirt and slacks, and the polo shirt tucked into the slacks, it's a very strange look. <laughs> the promos he cuts are very strange. Uh, but the smiley face masks are a, a a big improvement, I think. It's like when Flair started wrestling in a polo in 1999. You're like, why is he doing that? He didn't want anyone to see his tummy. Okay, but he could just wear like a singlet. <laughs> or he didn't want anyone to see his tummy. <laughs> or a t-shirt with with his trunks, like he ended up doing for years after that whatever (laughs) who knows a lot of i don't have a good answer for it look i also don't want anyone to see my tummy so i i empathize with with joe gacy in in that way but yeah uh as far as uh, yeah making giving her a weird nxt name eva rain yeah you could you could even get cute with it if you don't want to call her simone johnson could call her you know simone Maivia. Or something, sure. just some kind of wink to it, or, or if it's about well, we want to own the name, we'll just change your first name and leave Johnson or or something like that. I don't know. Feels like yes, you would you would want to scream from the rooftops that the biggest star in the history of your company has a <laughs> has a, has an offspring that you uh, you currently uh, have under contract. You think you you think you'd want to call attention to that more, but uh, no, not uh, not at the moment. Well, we certainly covered a lot here. Uh, is there anything else you want to discuss? Uh, you saw uh, Dwayne's new movie. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, I just want to make it clear uh, that that movie was for the fans and not yes. not not the critics. It was Dwayne. Dwayne was doing this for the fans, and uh, and he wants to make it clear the big thing. Uh, the big thing in the movie, which everyone probably already knows about because they just started talking about it <laughs> actually Dwayne was talking about it before the movie comes out so I don't even know if it counts as a spoiler but uh, they bring back uh, Henry Cavill as Superman in the in the post credit scene and Dwayne went to great lengths in the marketing push for this movie to ensure that you knew that 
he is the one who did this <laughs> because it's very important to him that it's not just, hey, the fans are getting what they want. It's I, Dwayne Johnson, am giving you this because I am for the fans. And uh, and I just I love that. It reminded me, I told you this off the air of uh, when Vince McMahon brought Matt Hardy out on Raw in 2005. It's like it's not just we're giving you what you want. It's important that you know that I'm the one who who is doing this and I'm the one that ultimately is facilitating this thing that you want to see. So uh, big, big week for for the Dwayne brand. He also, if you saw the movie and uh, put it on social media, there was a 94% chance that The Rock would respond to you (laughs) because the reviews for that movie were pretty savage and he was uh, trying to do his own viral marketing campaign on social media. I think it worked. I think it, I think, I mean, I know it did huge business internationally and it did good business here in the United States. It uh, was like the biggest opening in three months or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, good for them. Good for them. Good for them. But yes, (laughs) Dwayne wants you to know that he, he and Danny Garcia and Hiram Garcia, they are building out their DC cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. The things you like, it's them. Yeah, that's 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 what's important here. (laughs) And uh, only other wrestling note, I guess, is worth talking about is that New Japan said that if Carl Anderson doesn't appear at this this Battle Autumn show, that he's getting stripped of the Never title. But also, maybe according to Fightful, that's in and of itself. They still expect to work with him after that. So maybe that's a storyline where they're they're going to strip him, but then he's going to come back and wrestle. Who was he supposed to fight? Hikaleo. Yeah, the, you talk about playing 4D chess. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here. This is clearly a storyline of some kind. I don't can't begin to understand it, and I can't begin to know who cares. I mean, it, like, yeah, what's? <laughs> I don't understand what's in it for New Japan. Like, it's not as if like. Hikaleo is going to get so much if if the end end goal here is well eventually Carl Anderson will come back and lose to Hikaleo like what is <laughs> what does that matter I, it, I I don't know what does it matter if Hikaleo wins it from him or he wins it in a vacant vac- wins the vacant title against Tai Chi or somebody like who cares <laughs> it's the never belt for God's sake <laughs> the taller balder good brother did get body slammed and kicked in the balls by rhea ripley on raw this week (laughs) saw the body slam and the kick in the balls was implied or was it anderson that got kicked in the balls anyway i i don't know it doesn't (laughs) the good brothers the good brothers are everywhere sure all right uh it's time to get out time to get out of here so uh till next time everyone i'm ethan and i'm liam We'll be back soon with more stories from wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Here we are. <laughs> we survived another dolphin laser show. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen our fair share. You know, the neon butt cheeks. I did not <laughs> see coming. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I got to I, I think once, uh, once, uh, once you've seen one uh, dolphin laser show, you've you've kind of seen them all. I think. I don't <laughs> I think. I think we can just go out at one. I don't think I. Uh, I need to see a second one, if I'm honest. Sure, sure. Why? Uh, why? Why is that? A th- I don't know. Why am I asking? <laughs> as if, as if there's an answer.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no uh there's no uh good answer there. Uh, like there's other than what I came to as far as when it was shifting, which is that this is definitely like the tech demo mode. Ah. And it's yes. like, oh, if you're, you know, you can have an animal on it. You can have a, if it's like a dancey thing. You can have, you know, sexy ladies dancing or whatever. Or, you know, you can have whatever else was on there. A cowboy playing a piano or something. Right. <laughs> you know, right. covers all the bases. Wedding. And, uh, and there was a dolphin laser show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also, and also a butt. Mm -hmm. And a cowboy playing a piano. (laughs) Classics. I'm excited to see uh, if I get to watch any of this game. If uh, Al Michaels, uh, how much of his fastball Al Michaels still has. I forget which Thursday night game I watched. Uh, I don't think I've watched a full one, but I watched part of one and he sounded pretty defeated, but <laughs> it could have been the, the, the quality of play uh, more, more to do with that than his, uh, his not having a love for the, uh, for the game at this point. That's fair. There were like zero touchdowns scored in the first three games or something like that. <laughs> the first three Thursday night games. Yeah. On Amazon, yeah. Happy Halloween, everyone. I try to keep on keeping on.